Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Mike Philibert, Heritage Presbyterian Church. This is uh, the 15th of August. It's Thursday. And so today for morning prayer, we are at Psalm 14. Psalm 14, and then we're going to pick up at the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 5, verse 21. Psalm 14 to the choir master of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in te great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You, should shame, uh, you would shame the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. That was Psalm 14, and Psalm 14 shows up in Romans chapter 3 when Paul is talking about how there's none righteous, no, not one, etc. He quotes this one several times. Now we're at Mark. Mark 5, beginning at verse 21, there's actually two stories pulled together here, and we've got to read both of them, so hold on tight. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then, then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And Jesus went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see what it had, uh, who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he put them all outside and took the, father, the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in there, in, in where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he quickly, and he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. Wow, what a t touching set of stories. Uh, that was Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 through verse 43. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven. We pray, we pray for your church, we pray for your people. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. That you, Lord, would restore the fortunes of your people. That Jacob may rejoice and Israel would be glad. We pray that. We pray, Lord, for those we know who are burdened by such things, um, whether it's mental illness, whether it's physical uh, ailments, whether it's financial catastrophes or or those things, Lord, we pray for them. We pray that just as you raised Jairus' daughter, just as you set this woman free from her hemorrhaging, her years and years of hemorrhaging and being discomforted, and you spoke to her and you said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. We pray that you would rise up and set these folks free. I think of some right now on my own heart, 
that uh, I know who are in, in, in uh, tough, tough situations, Lord. I pray for them. And we pray together for those that we all know. Lord Jesus, thank you that you set the captives free. I pray for anyone watching this who needed to hear that, that they would go away refreshed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, that was morning prayer for today. And we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.